All right, I am back again, and once again, I am continuing my series of cameras that I owned but don't own anymore. And this next camera is probably one of the better-known cameras on the list. It's the Canon AE-1 Program. Not to be confused with the Canon AE-1, the older version that is, I guess, slightly more primitive. I don't know exactly what the differences are. I do know the Program version that came along a little later has both electronic aperture control and electronic shutter control, whereas I think the previous version only had electronic shutter, I believe, but I could be wrong. Uh, so I had this camera for a while. This is actually one of the first um, film cameras I bought. I got it off a Craigslist listing, uh, and I got an old camera bag with the 50mm f1.8 lens, the 24 f2.8 lens, and the camera itself, as well as an old flash that I never really used, and all the manuals and everything, and it was like $75, so it was a really good deal. Um, I got at home though and realized that the aperture blades were kind of stuck on the 50mm f1.8 lens. Fortunately, I looked it up though and it's a pretty easy fix and I was able to do it myself that same day and I was really impressed with myself. That was my first ever camera repair and I'm still kind of proud of it. And uh, I went out and I actually ended up using this camera at a Civil War reenactment. I took a lot of photos there. Uh, and I learned a few things about the camera. I learned that it, um, all in all, it's a pretty good camera. Uh, it does have some issues. Um, I found that when the automatic exposure was on, it did seem to kind of underexpose. I don't know exactly why. There aren't any compensators on the camera as far as I remember, so those couldn't have been set wrong. I think maybe uh, I just, because um, I know it has an ASA setting, and I set that for the film, and that should have been correct, but it just seemed like a lot of the images came out underexposed. They weren't unusable, but just darker than I would have liked. Um, I like the 50mm f1.8 lens. It was a pretty good lens. It was not at all remarkable, and it was not great. There's a lot of better 50mm lenses out there, but it's pretty common. Uh, the 24mm f2.8 lens was good. Uh, hard to say much more than that. I didn't use that one quite as much. It was definitely a good lens. Uh, it was sharp and everything, uh, but I, I just I sometimes felt the 24 was a little bit too wide. And that actually kind of, that lens made me start leaning a little more towards the 35-28 range, which is now where I'm pretty firmly seated. Uh, as I said, the 50mm f1.8 lens was pretty good. I did notice after I developed the film that it had um, sort of choppy bokeh that I didn't particularly like. Uh, now, I did later get the 50mm f1.4 version of the lens, which is a little bit rare and a little bit more expensive, but it is worth every penny. It is just as sharp if not sharper it focuses closer by at least a foot maybe 18 inches um, so it's actually a very close focusing lens for that time period sort of the 80s and whatnot uh, it also has a lot more aperture blades so the aperture is much more appealing and I know I shot at least one roll of color film with that 51.4 but I just I can't really find it so I don't think I can include any sample images but I'll include quite a few from the Civil War reenactment um, I took a decent number on either lens, the 51.8 and the 24 f2.8, and I wasn't terribly disappointed. Like I said, it did seem, the meter did seem to underexpose, I think the lenses were very good. Uh, another issue I found when I was using the camera at that particular event was, at some point I was advancing the film and it got towards the end of the roll, and I advanced it thinking there was one more shot left, and it just kind of ripped all the film out of the cassette, and um, it was kind of floating free in the camera. Fortunately, I kind of knew what had happened. I, again, I don't even know how I knew that since this is one of the first times I'd shot film in a very long time. But somehow, I guess just the sound and the rough feeling made me kind of know, oh, I think I ripped the film out of the th out of the little cassette. So I took it home, opened it up in the dark, and I pulled out all the film and quickly put it in a dark uh, film uh, canister thing like the actual film cassettes are usually sold in. And then I developed it a little later out of that. And the images came out fine, but it was just kind of frustrating to see that because I, I wasn't able to use the camera for the rest of the day. That fortunately did happen after I'd already shot two or three rolls, so it wasn't that big of a of an issue. But at the same time, I've never had that happen to me on another camera. So that was kind of odd because that's the only camera where that's ever happened to me. Um, Another issue I've heard about, I don't know how commonly it affects the Canon AE-1 programs, but I know some cameras in that Canon A family have an issue where the some circuitry in them will become corrupted and they, they drain the battery really fast and they use a, um, ah, I can't quite remember, it's a, a very small battery, it's kind of like a AAA battery but quite a bit shorter and they're not especially easy to find, they're not especially cheap either, I wouldn't say they're expensive, but they're more expensive than most other more common batteries, uh, and you don't find them everywhere, and it, if you, that can be a real frustrating issue because the batteries will drain after like, you know, two weeks or so, and you have to keep replacing them, and again, that's just one of those things where it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it definitely adds up, and it can be frustrating, and I know that affects the 
the Canon A1s and the AV1s a whole lot. I don't think it affects the AE1 programs quite as much, but I, I know the cameras, all those cameras are very similar builds, so I wouldn't be shocked if some of them have that flaw, so that's just something to be aware of if you're um, looking into one of these cameras. Uh, so I guess the Canon AE1 program is an interesting camera because it's often one that's cited for beginners and sort of film amateurs, and this is again one of the first um, one of the first ones I ever really used extensively. Uh, so I think I kind of fit that bill perfectly, and I have to say, as a beginner, I was pretty impressed by it. I like the fact it had the automatic exposure and that it's um, it was pretty easy to use. It had a nice the little LED light meter in the uh, viewfinder, but uh, I guess. I outgrew it pretty quickly. Certain things like the seeing the final developed film and seeing that it was the exposure wasn't super accurate and remembering that I had that strange film advance issue. Those are things that didn't quite sit well with me, so that kind of prompted me to move on to Nikon cameras. I don't know if there's really much more I can say about this camera and the lenses. I would say the lenses outshine the camera. And if you're really interested in one of these setups, it might be worth it to buy a Canon F1 and pick up some of those Canon lenses because, um, like I said, they're very good lenses. A lot of those later Canon FD lenses are easily equal to Nikon lenses. Uh, and I, I, I'm, 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 I, it's hard to say, but I'm almost tempted to say that the 51.4 might actually be a little bit better than, than the uh, Nikon version. I wouldn't put a lot of money on that, but I, from what I recall seeing, it seemed like they were at the very least comparable. So um, I think that pretty much sums it up for this camera. It's a good camera, great for beginners, but I, I don't know if you're a very serious photographer. You might find that its selection of lenses are a little bit limited and that um, it doesn't really have tons of features. It doesn't have the interchangeable viewfinders like a lot of Nikons and a lot of other high-end cameras out there. Um, it lacks certain features like a... Um, I don't remember now if it had a self-timer on it. I don't think it did, but it might have had some sort of electronic self-timer. It does have um, aperture preview, which is kind of nice. It's a little button built onto the lens. Um, it lacks some other feature. It doesn't have exposure compensator, as I said. So it does lack a few features you might want from a high-end camera, but um, it's not exactly a high-end camera. It's a very consumer-grade camera. Uh, so if you're looking to for a camera to get you started in film, this is probably a very good camera for you. If you already own a couple of cameras, like if you already own a Nikon, like an FM2 or an FM3A, you're not going to be impressed by this camera. If you're coming over from an old one, like maybe some sort of Pentex Spotmatic or... Um, you know, maybe you have some old rangefinder. This might be an interesting thing to shift into that's a little bit more modern, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to impress everybody, especially if you already own cameras and are pretty experienced with vintage film cameras. It, uh, it's a nice camera in a lot of ways. It's very convenient and easy to use, but uh, I don't know if I can say too much for the build quality. So um, that's pretty much my overview of the Canon AE-1 program. Great camera for beginners, but a camera that a lot of people I think will end up outgrowing, and that's kind of what happened to me and why I sold this camera.